Where is my Kindle? Here is my Kindle. Wait, wait. Okay. I'm gonna be talking about the last five books I read because I've only read five books this year. And I read four of those in January and then I just stopped. So I feel a little illiterate, but I read for pleasure. So I don't know what to tell you. I really branched out and read books that I usually don't. It's a lot of contemporary fiction. So if you're into that stuff, maybe you'll find a book that you enjoy. I'm gonna jump right into it. So the first book that I read was Carrie Soto is Back. Um, Carrie Soto is Back is about this tennis legend, Carrie Soto, and her journey with trying to win a championship in, I believe her forties. The whole book is basically her just saying, fuck you, I'm Carrie Soto, I'm a champion, watch me but also how in being this badass woman, she has like blocked out any kind of love and how her childhood and her upbringing and just the way that people looked at her and spoke to her and just hated on her for being who she is really closed her up to like love and relationships and just overall her healing herself and coming to terms with aging and being a woman. I love story about a protagonist who knows that they're destined for greater things and that's basically all this book was was like 300 pages of her talking about how good she is which I personally loved. Malibu Rising was a romp. I thought it was a fun time. Carrie was one of my favorite characters in that book. I love an angry woman so it made sense I would like this but in terms of I actually ended up reading another Taylor Jenkins read later in the year and I get why this one is slowed down. But if you are a no plot, just vibes girl who likes intense emotions, I think you would like this book. So I would give it a seven out of 10, but yeah, I enjoyed it. And then after that, I read Yerba Buena and I liked it. It was another book that is really out of my like comfort zone. I'm not a huge romance person. I feel like if you are also not really into romance books and find them boring, you potentially could like this one. It's a lesbian love story. And you have these two girls who are just kind of living their own lives. One has a lot of family issues and just hard situations that she was put in. And she's definitely running from some trauma from childhood. And then the other character is just kind of lost and there's definitely a contrast between these two characters and their life experiences as you're reading both sides of these stories you're like waiting for them to interact because you obviously can tell there's two points of views like they're gonna cross paths and when they do it's just such a slow burn and it's just silly little things that are happening where they're offending each other and hurting each other's feelings and it feels very very realistic and I liked it there was enough story with the woman who was running from things like background where her past and like things from her childhood and like with her dad and like family issues came up to make it interesting and to kind of move the plot along and to give her a reason to like do bad things or to be misunderstood and things like that that it kept my attention it wasn't just like all this lovey-dovey yearning yeah it was like a very nice refreshing read it's not again super like my kind of book i give it like a six but if you're looking for a very just like refreshing read this is great it was like a palette cleanser and then the next book i read it was also on my kindle was cleopatra and frankenstein I love this book. This is everything I want from like this genre of book because I feel like these contemporary stories of like women doing hot girl shit in the big city, it can miss the mark. They try so hard to be that caricature where it just falls flat and it doesn't feel realistic and it's not a fun story to follow. But this was a fun story to follow. I loved it. I hated the characters. I love them. They felt super real. I read this book in pretty much a day. I should also talk about the plot of this. The plot of this is Cleopatra, a fun woman on her own path in life, meets Frankie, 
who is like kind of a man baby who works at like an ad agency. And it's literally just about their fucked up chaotic relationship. And it's kind of like, you know how you'll just meet the worst people at parties? It's that, it's like, they're the two worst people at parties. They're cool and they're getting all the attention, but they're the worst people to just be around. They're absolutely insufferable and I loved it. It's hard to find like a good, fun female book that isn't cheesy. So I know that it's not like a strong book, but to me, I really like it. So I'd give it a nine. And then the next book, I actually have the physical copy. All's Well by Mona Awad. It, I don't know how to explain it. I read Bunny like three years ago. Bunny to me feels like Pretty Little Liars where it was just all the ideas all at once doesn't really connect, doesn't really make sense. Is this rooted in reality? What's happening? And this definitely had the same vibes. This book follows a theater teacher in college orchestrating a Shakespeare play. And she has very severe chronic illness and pain. And she is hell bent on playing All Is Well That Ends Well while her students want to play Macbeth. And it basically, obviously the play is a metaphor for something else and she is really grasping at it and she's really trying to make this play happen and things just start to spiral out of control and basically you are as stuck in her body as she is in hers it's a hard book to read at times you see doctors hurt her people around her hurt her herself hurt herself i'm she's in pain constantly and it's exhausting and she exhausts herself and she knows it. And there's definitely a contrast and a lot of jealousy towards her students because she is young herself, but she feels like she's in an old woman's body and being around young, silly college students who don't care about anything and are incredibly selfish and inconsiderate makes it way, way worse. And the story takes a very Mona Wad magical realism, what the fuck is happening approach. And I don't want to split it too much but it definitely this is split up into acts and it's a reason like there is a complete 180 and as somebody who is also chronically ill with autoimmune issues and a lot of constant pain it was kind of satisfying to read this book but also very painful and it was just satisfying seeing how the tables turned and like it's definitely a thought that most people have I feel like of like but you don't understand what I'm going through and I don't want to get too sad but like if you have chronic illness this is a very interesting read I would not have felt comfortable reading this a few years ago when I was having a harder time with it but now that I have got it under control and I've been to therapy and I am more comfortable around these topics it was an interesting read I personally think it's great because again I can really relate to it and it was like it scratched an itch in my brain that I had but didn't admit to myself of like that jealousy of like people who don't have to ever compromise in their life and they're never in pain and like that's not their standard so yeah a complicated book give it a read if you're able body may just make you sad if you're chronically ill may just make you sad if you were chronically ill went to therapy might be kind of nice this is one of the most interesting books I've read and I'll, it will stick with me <laughs> it'll definitely stick with me I've tried to film this little section about this book and talking with it like four times now to a point that my camera died so I'm just gonna leave it at that I don't know how to detach my own emotions from this book so if you like Mono Wald it's a weird surreal book I give it like an eight Point five. I'm gonna stop talking about it because the more I think about it, the more confused I am. And I'm trying to be concise. So the final book I read on my Kindle and it is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Everyone hyped this book up. I got a lot of recommendations for it because I love old Hollywood books, but it just wasn't it. It was like, and I think so many people spoiled the ending that like I knew what was gonna happen. And also the traits that I liked about this book, I saw ran through Carrie Soto already. So Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo is about this old Hollywood actress who has seven husbands and you find the backstory a lot of them are tragic about why she married this 
person, whether it be for fame or to get out of a situation that a different husband caused or to get a movie or because she was getting canceled or because of horrible things were happening to her. Like time and time again, she was marrying people not because she loved them, because she had to. And to continue doing what she wanted and to be who she wanted to be and to feel safe and protected and have her career and be a great actress, she had to make these compromises. And it's basically like how people were horrible to her, but that she was always this like strong pillar and held herself in a certain way and just still managed to control the narrative around her life. And it's a super interesting read. Um, if you're into old Hollywood, it did a good job at like having that feel. But yeah, after reading Malibu Rising and also Carrie Soto, it, I was expecting more. And I really think it's because Carrie Soto explored a lot of the similar topics of like being a strong woman and aging gracefully and male validation and just general validation and validating yourself. And Carrie Soto was much more of like a, it wasn't just like a one-off paragraph where the main character realized is that she's a strong woman by herself. Carrie Soto was like, I'm a strong woman, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, which I enjoyed. So it just kind of missed the mark for me. The ending, I guessed, so it wasn't the big wow that I thought. I did tear up a little bit, but it wasn't the showstopper that I thought it was. So just for that, this is a book where I can tell it is a good book and it's very well written, but the story just didn't resonate with me. So like from this list, this is probably the best written book but I didn't really care about the plot too much or the characters, they weren't very memorable. So I am gonna give this personally like a six. But again, if I read this before I read Carrie Soto, I would have liked it a lot more and I would have probably found Carrie Soto boring or Carrie Soto would have been the fucking strong female figure that I wanted. I wanted to say girl boss, but I stopped myself. But yeah, those are the last five books that I read. Seven Husbands kind of put me in a reading slump and I have not read a book in a little while, but I just started Bliss Montage, which I am really enjoying. I'm almost done with it. And I also started The Girls, which I am loving. And I'm starting to get back into reading and there are some books on my list. So hopefully this video wasn't too all over the place. I would like to get better at reviewing books because I just love talking about books, but it's hard to get all my thoughts in one place. If you guys have any feedback, let me know. If you have any books you think I'd like, let me know. If you have books that you want me to review, let me know. I'll do it. As long as I can have this channel as a fun place where I get to talk about things I like, I will be happy. And I like talking about books in general. So I hope somebody found something out of these and yeah. Until next week, goodbye.